Ford's Theater opened in 1863. I wasn't here. <laughs> but it was a year when most Americans were farmers and people still sang folk songs like Shoe Fly. The street outside was a dirt road and America was locked in a civil war that ravaged thousands of acres and tens of thousands of lives. In one titanic struggle, gave tonight's play its name, the Battle of Shiloh, more than 20,000 soldiers were cut down. Few burdens can compare with the, those that were borne by the men and women who lived in this city during those bitter years. And yet even then, Washingtonians could gather at Ford's Theater as we gather tonight to see the latest play, to enjoy relief from the troubles of the day. Congressmen, senators, Mr. Lincoln himself found their duties easier because they could seek an evening of entertainment at Ford's. This theater demonstrated during the years that whatever events demand the nation's attention, the arts must always have their place. Today, Ford Theater is still giving Americans uplift and inspiration and in keeping Ford's active, vibrant institution, all of you testify to the importance of remembering our own history and witness the central place of the arts in our lives and set a fine example of the kind of private support that we've given in this country to such rich, given us such a rich cultural life. The hundreds of people deserve thanks, as you were told, but as executive producer of Ford's, Frankie Hewitt, of course, played the central role in making possible this wonderful evening and every evening in this theater. Then there are the Board of Governors, the sponsors, the patrons, and the contributors. <coughs> But tonight does belong to one woman who has given of herself to Fords, to the city, and to everyone fortunate enough to know her, Mildred O'Neill. Now, Mildred, you may have suspected now and then that from time to time, your husband and I find something about which we disagree. <laughs> but there is one thing that we sure agree on. He's lucky, mighty lucky, to be the man in your life. <laughs> on behalf of everybody with whom you work, you will work for this grand old theater. It's meant so much, Millie, that we all thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And now, the lady, the man whose life I'm lucky to be in, has a word to say. Nancy? pleasure to be in Ford's Theater, and tonight I feel doubly honored to have the privilege of giving a unique award to a wonderful lady. Millie O'Neill, as most of us know, moved to Washington permanently when her husband was elected as Speaker of the House. Ford's Theater was the first organization she became involved with in our nation's capital, and seven years later, she's been unanimously chosen to receive the Lincoln Medal for her generous support of the theater. It would be impossible to tell you everything that Millie has done for Ford's, but I do want to make special mention of her help in raising almost $4 million for the theater over the last five years. <laughs> On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Ford's Theater and everyone who, pl um, who applauds the live theater program at Ford's, I'm honored to present the Lincoln Medal to Mrs. Thomas P. O'Neill, Jr. Thank you.
state of Jamaica are gay was so successful. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. I am delighted to receive this award and be included in a very prestigious group who have been honorees before me. I am just delighted that I have said many times before that anything that I have done to Floyd's Theatre has been a labor of love. I've enjoyed every minute of it. There aren't enough medals around for everyone that should be awarded. I would like to share this and, and accept it in the name of all the very wonderful men and women who have performed here at the Gales, and also to the wonderful friends of Ford who have so, been so very generous and gracious when I came begging, and I came begging very often. I thank you all, and I'm truly very grateful yours. Thank you.